Cuddling up with a new book is one of our favorite activities, especially when the book is about our favorite TV girls. Stan Zimmerman is back with us tonight to tell us all about that new book, The Girls from Golden to Gilmore. Hey, Stan, how are you? How are you doing? <laughs> Good. We first uh, talked with you about two years ago. We were celebrating Betty White on what would have been her 100th birthday. She might be the most famous girl you worked with, but you've worked with so many of our favorite TV ladies. Tell us all about that Hollywood experience and how it turned into your book. Well, people kept asking me, how as a man could you write for all these women? <laughs> and I started thinking about it, and I really have to credit my grandmother, my mother, my sister for inspiring me and teaching me, you know, how to be a better man. And that's how the book started. And then when I got the title, The Girls from Golden to Gilmore, I just knew I had to get to writing. So I started drinking coffee, coffee, coffee. <laughs> and that's for, the, that's for the Gilmore fans. <laughs> This book, really, like you said, the Gilmore Girls, the Golden Girls, but there's a lot of other famous people that you have written on. How many different TV shows can you even count? How many shows you've been a part of? A lot of them, and sometimes I just would go in and help. Uh, like I worked with my friend Amy Sherman Palladino when she was doing the pilot to Bunhead, so that was fun. So that's kind of a uh, honor that we have as uh, fellow writers. We help each other out when we're doing new shows. But a, a lot of TV shows, some that you know became successes and some that did not. You're lucky in a career if you have one hit TV show, yeah. but the fact that I was lucky enough to be on three, and three that are still so popular and still seem to be so relevant. Gilmore Girls was the number six TV show watched in 2023. Wow. How crazy is that? That's so awesome with the resurgence of all these shows on the streaming services. It, like your work is just getting passed on to generations and generations of a lot of girls, let's face it, and boys who are watching for the first too. time. But yeah. uh, what show did you work the longest on? Was it Gilmore Girls? Um, no, I think, uh, well, I did a lot of one seasons on shows, mm -hmm. uh, which back then was 24 episodes. So right. that was a lot. You know, now, you know, there's 10 episodes of a series, but when you have to do a whole year of that, that uh, can get very exhausting, mm -hmm. uh, but also it's exciting because you really get to develop the characters over a full year. When you think of all these ladies that you worked with and wrote for, who do you think was like the farthest thing from her actual character that she played? Oh, that's a good question. I've never been asked that <laughs> one before. Um, wow. Um, you know, I think as shows go on, you start to lean into who they really are. Mm -hmm. So like Rue McClanahan wasn't really Blanche, but she kind of became Blanche. Sure. She had multiple husbands. Um, <laughs> but to me, she was really the a real actor actor. And she came to us very early on when we got onto the show and said, and this was season one, mm -hmm. she said, really challenge my character. You know, she loved acting. And I didn't know till years later, we actually went to the same summer stock oh. theater in Hampton, New Hampshire. I was but a mere child, and, and she had gone years and years before. But I wish, you know, there was the internet, and I could, <laughs> could have that back. I would have talked to her about that. But luckily, I did get to talk to her sister, um, who um, um, Linda, who I did get to meet and spend many times with on the Golden Fans at Sea Cruises, mm -hmm. which I'll be doing again in March of 2025 out of Fort Lauderdale. Awesome. Which one of these characters, if you can pick one, has been your favorite to write for? Uh, this may be a shock, but I really loved writing for Roseanne. Yeah. Um, you know, there was obviously some things going on on, you know, the set, which, you know, have been well documented. Uh, a lot of craziness, especially with 21 writers on staff. Usually you have maybe eight or nine, but there were 21 people. Uh, I love the idea that we were talking about middle America families. Um, I come from a suburb of Detroit. I know you're in Illinois, mm -hmm. uh, but you didn't see that a lot on television, the struggles where you find a you know, loose change in, in the couch. Sure. And for me, growing up with Norman Lear TV shows, I hadn't really seen that on television very often in my lifetime, you know, since a child. So I was really glad to be able to write for a show like that, that uh, didn't just go for the jokes, but went for, the reality of what it's like to struggle and survive as a family. Sure. All right. We got one uh, more question for you about this book. What chapter or what show, when we're reading the book, will we get the best tea? <laughs> oh, wow. There is tea throughout. Uh, <laughs> luckily, I kept journals uh, starting from when I was in college. So I wrote during 
all of these TV shows. So there's a bunch of tea about all of them and then all the wonderful women that I met developing TV shows like uh, Mrs. Diana Ross. Uh, there's a little bit about her. Um, and then it's also about my family and my mother and unfortunately my mom's passing three years ago. So it deals with grief, which I know a lot of people have mm -hmm. dealt with. All right, where can we get our hands on this book, Stan? Amazon and everywhere. Just Google the girls from uh, Golden to Gilmore. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Bye. And we'll be right back with our friends from Q98.5.